Hello, this is Mr. Mabry, and this is going to be a screencast of how to do a textbook reflective reading. For our new unit, which you guys have recently received your roadmaps for, you'll see that we have a reflective reading on textbook section 1.1, and you've never done one with me before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help guide you the first few pages on this reflective reading. As soon as you feel like you're getting the hang of it, feel free to stop the video and complete the reading on your own, or you can stay with me as long as you want. For this specific reading, we're only going to be doing pages 9 through 13. And my simple rules are that you write down every heading. You try to give me at least one summary point underneath each heading. If you see any bolded vocabulary words, you define them. And if you see any pictures, that you go ahead and draw them. So those are the four rules. Headings, summary, vocab, pictures. All right, let's give it a start. All right, on the screen, you will probably be seeing, there we go, let's center it up. Uh, here's the textbook reading, and I'm going to read along with you for a couple pages until you get the hang of it. Here we go. So it looks like our key concept is atoms are the smallest form of elements. If that's the main thing we're supposed to remember. It seems like we should write that down. So I've got my notebook paper here. I'm going to go ahead and write this in big letters. Feel free to do the same. Atoms are the smallest form of elements. Atoms are the smallest form of elements. And in front of that, I'm going to write down key concept, underlined. All right, don't forget that. Let's go now to our next heading. Scroll down through the activity. Here we go, our first text. Whoa, jumping around. All matter is made of atoms. So I better write that down. So, all, oh, still big text. Here we go. All matter is made of atoms. Okay. That's my first heading. Now, I remember I said write the heading, then you have to summarize at least one point underneath. And remember, you could write a detail, but let's try to get a point. So I'm going to read it, and you can read along with me if you'd like. Think of all the substances you see and touch every day. Are all of these substances the same? Obviously, the substances that make up this book you're reading are quite different from the substances in the air around you. So how many different substances can there be? This is a question people have been asking for thousands of years. About 2,400 years ago, Greek philosophers proposed that everything on Earth was made of only four basic substances, air, water, fire, and earth. Everything else contained a mixture of these four substances. As time went on, chemists came to realize there had to be more than four basic substances. Today, chemists know that about 100 basic substances, or elements, account for everything we see and touch. Sometimes these elements appear by themselves. Most often, however, these elements appear in combination with other elements to make new substances. In this section, you'll learn about the atoms of the elements that make up the world and how these atoms differ from one another. Now you're thinking and I'm thinking, this sounds like introductory, there's nothing really here. But there's at least one idea. And the idea that I'm seeing, that I'm going to write down, is... Let's see... Greek thought there were only four major substances water, fire, air, and earth. Now we know there are hundreds. Cool. And that is it. Let's move on to the next page. It's that easy. Next page. All right. New heading. Types of atoms in Earth's crust and living things. Types of atom types. Whoopsie daisy. Types of atoms in Earth's crust and living things. I'm going to underline it so I know that that's a heading. And then I have to summarize, so I'm going to go and get my bullet point ready. Great, we're ready. Back to my text. Atoms of the element hydrogen account for about 90% of the total mass of the universe. Hydrogen atoms make up only about 1% of Earth's crust. However, and most of these hydrogen atoms are combined with oxygen atoms in the form of water. The graph on the left shows the types of atoms in approximately the top 100 kilometers of Earth's crust. 
The distribution of the atoms of the elements in living things is very different from what it is in Earth's crust. Living things contain at least 25 types of atoms. Although the amount of these atoms varies somewhat, all living things, animals, plants, and bacteria are composed primarily of atoms of oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. As you can see in the lower graph on the left, oxygen atoms account for more than half of your body's mass. All right. Now remember I said you have to, four rules, do your heading, summary, diagrams, and bolded vocabulary words. So first we need to summarize. Uh, a lot of details here, a lot of details here, but you know what? Look at this first sentence. The distribution of atoms in the elements and living things is very different from what it is in the crust. That seems a pretty good summary to me of both of these paragraphs. So I'm going to put in my own words. Atoms in my body are very different from the atoms in the Earth's crust. Okay, I did my summary sentence, but wait, darn it, there's a picture here and here. Now, if I were you, I would put my piece of paper on top of that picture and trace it. But since I can't do that, you are going to have a good laugh as me, at me as I get out my Microsoft Office drawing tool. And I'm going to try to draw it sideways here, and I can pick up my pencil or it goes away. So here is one chart. There's my circle. And I've got to do this here and come across here and some slices here. And then, because I don't want to pick up my circle, i got to do the second one. And you guys know it looks down and around and over and slice it up. And then I've got to go ahead and label these things. So I'm going to write off to the side here as you're laughing at me. Thanks a lot, guys. So I have the Earth's crust on the left, and I have humans on the right, and then I'm going to say, if I wasn't doing this on my computer, I would label my drawing. So that's what I'm expecting you guys to do. So please, if, you're, if your graph is as ugly as mine, you got problems. Okay, but let's move on. Next section. Do, do, do. Computer problems, Mr. Mabry, scoot up, scroll down. Here we go. Names and symbols of elements. Elements get their names in many different ways. Magnesium, for example, was named for the region in Greece known as Magnesia. Lithium comes from the Greek word lithos, which means stone. Neptunium was named after the planet Neptune. These elements, Einsteinium and Fermium, were named after scientists Albert Einstein and Enrico Fermi. Each element has its own unique symbol. For some elements, the symbol is simply the first letter of its name, hydrogen, sulfur, carbon. The symbols for other elements use the first letter plus one other element letter of the element's name. Notice that the first letter is capitalized, but the second letter is not. Aluminum is AO, platinum, PT, cadmium, CD, zinc, Zn. The origins of some symbols, however, are less obvious. The symbol for gold, AU, for example, doesn't seem to have anything to do with the element's name. The symbol refers instead to gold's name in Latin, Aurum. Lead, PB, iron, Fe, and copper, Cu, are a few other elements whose symbols come from Latin names. Okay. So we write the heading, names and symbols of elements. Names and symbols of elements. And I'm going to fix my font because I like this font better. Let's go back to 12. And then I think to myself, how do I summarize this? I think for me, I feel like there's too much information to just do one bullet point. So I'm thinking. Here there's Greek words they use for names, and here there's Latin words for names, and here they were named after people. So I think I'm going to try to summarize this by saying element, some elements come from Latin words, some from Greek, and some are named after famous people. Seems like a pretty good summary. 
But then it seemed also like there's a point I'm missing. Um, some elements just have one letter, and some elements have one capital and one lowercase. That also seems important, so I'm going to write that down. Some elements have one capital letter, and others have one capital and one lowercase. Okay, that seems pretty good for names and symbols.